What's up guys, Quinn here. Welcome back to another episode of Cichlid Bros. Coast to coast, last summer we brought you to LA. Now we're in Washington DC, visiting a friend of the channel, Mike Ellerby, and we're gonna check out his awesome fish room. So let's go check it out. Okay, so we are starting off the fish room tour here where you have, it looks like, four aquariums up on your first floor, and then we'll head down to the basement. Uh, Mike, you said this was called the military room, is that correct? That's right. Uh, well, so we call it the military room. One of my buddies called it the, uh, the room of solace, Wh whatever you want to call it. It's one of those rooms where, uh, like, we celebrate my family history. Like, uh, I've got my Uncle Rennie on the wall here who uh, passed away in 2001 in a helicopter crash, and then my father, grandfather, and my uncle, who were all on the wall on this one. This is a room that uh, originally had no fish tanks in it. We still had all this military decor in, um, but adding the fish is just one of those places in our house that we definitely come in and sit down and just uh, think about what, what got us to where we are right now. And, uh, recognize the sacrifice that are made to, to get us here. Absolutely. So um, that's the purpose behind this room. I love it. And just starting here, this looks like a 125 gallon and what's going on in this tank? So as you can see, you guys should be able to see your influence, Troy, in this tank. This is 125 gallon. It's got a Tiger Oscar in it. It's got a Jack Dempsey. Uh, it's got, I think you said your father this is how you guys got yep. into the hobby with the uh, chocolate cichlid. It's got the redhead top of hose that you had in, I think it's your 150 gallon. Is that right? Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of what you had going in your 150 gallon tank, when I first got into the hobby, those were some of the fish that really intrigued me, um, which is why I put this together. My very first fish that I got outside of Glowfish is this little convict cichlid right here. And that's kind of where all this started was her and a 55 gallon with two males. Um, so I really like the setup with the sand and the driftwood and rocks. It looks really cool. De yeah. Definitely looks uh, a little familiar to me. <laughs> yeah, I told you. You guys have a, a, a huge influence in how I've put some of this stuff together. Then and moving on to this guy here. This one is the original 29 gallon tank. This is what started it all. Originally we had five glowfish and a common pleco in here. Uh, since cichlids became my big thing, this tank kind of became one of those that my wife, when we would go to the fish store, she would say, hey, that's really cool, it's not a cichlid. So that's kind of what this became. It's got a couple hill stream loaches in it, it's got uh, some yo-yo loaches, and then it's got some uh, two marble head standers and a lavender garami. Yeah, it is nice to have a tank every now and then without cichlids but uh, I like that the rest of yours do have cichlids. Yep. And one thing that all three of us noticed about all these aquariums is how clean and pristine they look, so props to you on that. It's not an easy job when you have so many aquariums. So you wanna head over to these right here? Yeah, so these are these right here are my pet fish, and uh, one of them, uh, I stayed within the Parachromis family because I, like, like Quinn has the uh, yellow jacket cichlid, my Parachromis is the red tiger moda. This is a male, so it doesn't have nearly as much color as the females do. They like to get that bright yellow and red. This one is a more dull green and red, but he's a lot of fun because this, this fish is very interactive. You come to the tank when he's ready to eat, he comes right up when he's ready to eat. Very interactive uh, and a lot of fun. This, this guy right here is about a eight month old black nasty male. Uh, he also is a lot of fun and what you'll notice is both of them tend to come to this corner and they kind of glass surf fight each other which is is fun because when they do that he'll color up he'll get a lot of black he'll get a black stripe right here that's really dark um, and they're just fun to watch but I know that here in the next couple months they'll have to uh, we'll have to upgrade their their tank as they're starting out grow these 55 gallons probably move them to something either a 90 uh, or something a little bit larger here in the next few months. Awesome, yeah, these are beautiful fish. Pretty aggressive, so I like that you have them as solo fish in here. 
uh, you're really going to enjoy them as true pets. Yeah, they definitely are. They're a lot like the Oscar. I mean, you come in the house, they'll come right up to the top when it's time to eat. They'll wag just like the Oscars wag. So they are definitely like wet pets, the definition. It's really cool to see these species and, you know, this size. Right. Uh, but there's way more to see if we go down to the basement. All right, so Troy took you guys through the upstairs fish room, the military room, so I got the honors to take you guys through some of the downstairs fish room tanks, starting right here. But as soon as you get downstairs, you got a couple breeding projects here. I African do. cichlids? I do, African cichlids. So these are German red African cichlids. So what I have is, these are all, these are all the fry, now baby fish. Uh, they're all starting to, well, they're hiding right now, but you're starting to be able to see a little bit of color in the males, definitely the dominant males, starting to see that, that white stripe across the uh, dorsal fin with the egg spots. Uh, and then you have some of the subdominant males and females that it's a little bit more difficult to tell. Uh, we're gonna let them grow out for another five, six months till I can truly vent them. Uh, and then I'll separate them and I'll take them over to the fish store and, and, let, and let those guys, uh, which ones I don't give to friends and put in my own tank, I'll let those guys sell them, so. Yeah, it's actually crazy. These guys are about probably less than two inches, and yeah. you can really see some good color. They got some nice parents over here in the next one. Yeah. So German he, red peacocks. Yeah, so he's hiding right now, but they're in this tank, what I have is I have one German, met, uh, German red male, and I have four females. Uh, they typically, I normally get a batch of fry about every once a month, once every couple months from one of the females and I just pop them right over into this sporting gallon and grow them out. Um, but that is my first breeding project. It's been a lot of fun and this is probably of all the African cichlids my favorite with how much color that fish has. Um, looking forward to getting a couple of those into my display tank. Yeah, I was definitely going to ask you which one is your favorite, but this is kind of just the tip of the iceberg down here for your basement fish room. So you want to go see the big boys? Yep. Go Let's see do the it. Big boys. Man, this is what we made the trip for right here. This is what I wanted to see. For He's, you, maybe not us. Hey, <laughs> he, like you said, he took influences from all of this, so this is kind of like Alex's corner right here. We got a big, how many gallons is this one? So this is 210 gallon. A big 210 gallon hap and peacock tank here, and a what, 125? 125. Mbuna tank here, and I am in love. These and I was just are, kidding, I love the Africans too. <laughs> yeah, we got Troy on board as well. These tanks, like Troy said, the theme of these tanks is how clean they are. It's actually really quiet for a fish room as well without so many tanks running. We got um, sponge filters, we got canister filters, we got hang on backs, and you just can't really hear any of them. Great lighting, and all the fish are have grown really fast yeah. and yeah. coated up really fast and they look great. Well, one thing that I took from you guys, and I know Troy's put out several videos about how you feed your fish, uh, but what I took from one of, one of the many videos was that the most important thing when it comes to fish growth is the quality of the water. So what I do is I, I weekly, I change at minimum 50% in every single tank. Most of the time with my larger tanks, I'm changing 80% of the water out. Um, I've got three filters on this tank, two FX6s and one FX4 on this tank, the FX4 is for polishing. Um, and so those are the takeaways, some of the big takeaways I have from a lot of your videos is it's, there's no such thing as over filtration. Keeping the water as clean as I possibly can is going to help the growth and help the health of the fish. Um, and that's one of my main goals with this. This is my, probably of all the tanks I have, obviously it's the biggest, so it's the one that I put the most, um, the most work into. Is it your favorite tank? So I would say it's my favorite tank, but the African cichlid is not my favorite fish. Oh, <laughs> I, I understand. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love the color. I love the, the behavior of the fish. Um, but there are some fish like the Oscar, like the red tiger moda, like the black nasty, the red terror, that to me, the behavior that they have with the inner personality, like these obviously where you go, they go. Yeah. Um, but when you walk into the house and I go in the military room and the Oscar's wagging at the, at the at the uh, top of the tank like a dog. That's very inviting. And when we talk about mental health and those types of things, yes. we talk about service animals. Those are some of the benefits of having animals that show you that even if they don't feel, they at least look like they love you. So. And I totally agree. And all of us being cichlid people with sick psyche and cichlid bros, I love the kind of differences between the different kinds of cichlids, like the different behaviors, the different personalities, yeah. and like the different 
pros and cons that you get with all of them and you kind of get to experience it all down here yeah I do and I and that I'm not saying anything I love this I love this tank I can get lost in this every single day so it's like a moving painting it is so many colors it's art it yes is. absolutely and and part of one thing that I will say I enjoy probably the most about African cichlids was the aquascaping. Mm -hmm. Like I love with the Mbunas, uh, what I did over here is I took some Texas Holy Rock and I used that as the foundation. So you've got all those cracks and crevices. And then I took Lace Rock and I built on top of the Texas Holy Rock so that there's plenty of hides, plenty of space. And what I've noticed with this aquarium is that like I get new babies, I get I mean, the, the growth and the life in this tank, the activity in this tank, um, both of these, I would say, in regards to the aquariums, are my favorite to watch as far as activity. Yeah, I mean, this thing is just such a living, breathing ecosystem. You got pothos on top, you got snails in there, you got different generations, you got, you said babies of all the different yep. groups you have. Some jallow reef babies, uh, some uh, celosi, uh, some, uh, I forget the other. Oh, uh, Red Top Hongi. So there is definitely something of everything in there. One thing that I definitely noticed about African cichlids is, especially more with the peacocks and haps, is you don't see a lot of two in my African cichlid tanks. Because what I've noticed is when I do put fish of the same type into this tank, it never works out well. Like when yeah. they look alike, I, there's a word for that. Um, conspecific aggression. Conspecific aggression. That's and, smart, Alec. Yep. They call me smart out. Yep. <laughs> Con specific aggression. So I've I've stayed away from that in my peacock and half tank. And fortunately in the Ambuna tank I haven't really had any problems with it. This is the result of people doing their research. There's a lot of information on YouTube. This guy's gone out there and got it. Yes. So I love these African cichlid tanks. I love all the other tanks, but we've got to give Quinn some opportunity to talk about his favorite, which is Central American. And that's you got a couple of Central American tanks left, so I'll turn it over to him. Definitely. All right, so five. <clears throat> Good start. Ow, he couldn't get one word. He almost <laughs> choked it up. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so finally, the part of the video that you guys have all probably been waiting for, we're going to check out the Central and South American cichlid tanks. Mike, what do we got here? So this is a 60-gallon tank. This one also is one of those tanks that eventually I'm definitely going to have to get these guys in something a little bit bigger. But what we have here is I bought this fish from my local fish store and it was sold to me as a trimat. I'm not sure that it's a trimat. When I look at it, and I, what I see is I see more vieja of some kind than I do anything else. I would agree. It looks like a vieja black belt, potentially? Potentially. So I know what it was sold to me as, as it got, as it grew, because I bought it when it was about this size. Mm -hmm. As it's gotten bigger, I know trimax typically have the red eyes, the yellow bodies. So I'm pretty sure we have some type of hybrid here. This fish here is a, a black belt cichlid, and that is fast becoming one of my favorite with how it has that blue reflective, it's got the pinkish, it's got a lot of color in that fish. It's beautiful, absolutely. Uh, this little guy, as it gets older, this is a uh, vieja breed hori, and it also, as it gets older, will display a lot of color, a lot of pinks and blues. Mm -hmm. It'll be a really pretty fish when it gets, uh, when it gets to its biggest size. Has the size difference of, uh, of these fish been any issue or are they pretty respectful of each other? No, so they have grown respectful of each other. They're, I think, at the size and at the tank capacity where they're getting a little bit uh, more aggressive towards each other. So definitely gonna have to take a look at probably separating them within the mm -hmm. next couple weeks making sure that they get the right space. I think that's probably the biggest issue right now. It's one of the benefits of having multiple tank syndrome is yes. you have flexibility where you can move some fish around to try to get them their best suited environment there. Absolutely, I think the other thing is, um, I also have a local fish store who is very open to taking fish and getting the, taking those fish off your hands um, and getting them relocated to, to homes that are gonna take good care of them. So. Um, Definitely, definitely do enjoy having multiple tanks so I can move them around. Though. Absolutely. Uh, this behind me, we have two of the uh, yellow severums uh, and two baby true green terrors. So I'm looking forward to the growth of these green terrors. These two, uh, I want to say, are a mated pair. They lay eggs like every month, uh, but I never get any fry. So they fight and they lock lips and. Uh, you can see this one here's uh, got 
nip fins because they just are constantly at each other. Uh, but I, I'm yet to have any babies. I love the the baby True Green Terrors right there. Uh, me and Mike were talking a little earlier, and that's one of our absolute fa favorite fish in common. Yeah. Uh, so really excited to see kind of what those fish ended up uh, becoming. Yeah, me too. And then if you come over here, this is a 125 gallon. And again, you'll see a lot of you guys' uh, influence on this tank. I have a large electric blue car there. Um, the Green Terror, which what we just talked about, the Gold Psalm Green Terror, um, that is the fish that hooked me in the hobby. When I watched y'all's video and I saw the big Green Terror that you all had in your yep. tank, uh, I love the color. And then there are times at night where you have like a blue when you have like a bluish light on in here and they just light up and that orange glows it's yep. really fun to watch seeing this gold psalm here um i'm inspired we're getting some green terrors in the classroom coming soon so we also have uh two uh red shoulder severums uh one of them is kind of beat up right there doesn't have a lot of color i have two of the uh red tiger severums in there and then in the very back hiding I've got a true parrot which I also took from one of Troy's yep. uh, I understand that you no longer have your true parrot but the influence is from you so still love it yep it's one of my favorite fish in this tank and then uh, that is my uh, wild Colombian Oscar absolutely so, uh, I mean I absolutely love the stock listing here these fish are just absolutely beautiful and I also love the skate too where it's very minimalist but also gives enough hiding places that the fish feel comfortable and they're going to be colored up because of that. Is that an Oscar back there as well? Did you already mention that? Yep, that's the uh, wild, and then there's a Zingu Pike also right okay. there. Yep. Awesome. Love that. And then in this tank, um, again, this uh, Viejas and Spillum is one of those that here shortly we're probably going to have to move. We've grown them to, I think he needs to get ready to go to a 125, but this, the stocking in this tank is minimal, so he there's not a lot of, um, he doesn't have a lot of issues. This has two clown loaches in it. It's got the VA Hassan Spillum. It's got the Electric Blue Texas Cichlid or the Carpentis and then a uh, Fire Mouth Cichlid. Yeah, absolutely love these fish. And then, I mean, this can't help but think that this looks eerily similar to Troy's first 75 gallon with the, the peppered sand and yep. uh, kind of the colors of the decor there. And This was one of my first 75 gallon okay. tanks. So, when I came down here, this 125 was a 75 gallon and this was a 75 gallon. Those were two of the first ones I had. And one, the 75 gallon here was an African cichlid where all those ended up. And then this one is the original. Awesome. Yeah, I love 75 gallon tanks are just great beginner tanks because you can do so much with them, but they're also not too big that you can't, uh, it's not difficult to maintain and all that, so I uh, absolutely love them. All right, last but not least, we couldn't forget these two awesome tanks, which look like grow-out tanks. Grow-out tanks, yeah. So in this 55-gallon, uh, just want to put this out there. There are five Red Tiger Motas out here, and I know 55 gallons is not ideal for a Red Tiger Moda, but what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to establish a pair, and once I get a pair, if I do, I will separate them, put them in a larger tank, and I will uh, donate the other three to my local fish store. Uh, so what I've already identified is there's a female that's hiding back there, and I'm just hoping that I can get a male to pair with her. And these guys are smaller versions of the bigger wet pet you have up right. in the military room. Right. Awesome. And then what's going on in the other tank here? So this is also, uh, and I, I'm almost getting to the point where I'm, I don't want to say giving up, but what I'm, I'm trying to do something similar here with the Red Terrors is I have three Red Terrors in this tank. I'm trying to get a pair and I'm hoping, I know this is a male, and I'm hoping that one of these two is a female and I can get a pair and start another breeding project as well. And I love Red Terrors. I've considered getting them for a while. The females get bright red and look stunning and then the males get huge. Yep. It's really uh, an awesome fish. These guys are still young, so they don't have a ton of that color yet, but just wait. Oh, they will. Like I have, like I said, I had one that unfortunately had, didn't make it, and it was about eight inches, and it was, I mean, it was a male, and for a male, it was colored up. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to hopefully getting at least one female. This is the fish that inspired Six Psyche. So it's a perfect tank and fish to highlight at the end here. Yep. <laughs> 
So I think one of the best parts about having an online fish community is inspiring each other and reaching out and developing relationships. And Mike, your fish room is completely inspiring. I think I'm gonna order some new fish on my way home from here. And I just love everything you've done from the military room down to the basement with all the themes of the tanks and how clean they are. Everything looks great, so thank you so much for having us. So oh, thank you guys for coming, it means a whole lot. And also, thank you for sharing your story in the previous video, which we'll link down in the description below, just your whole background and what really brought these aquariums down here and the whole setup and process you went through. So really appreciate it. Like Alex said, awesome fish room, and thanks again. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for coming. I appreciate you.